Hey everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez, and here with me today is my good friend, Matt Kleskowski. Hey Matt, what's up, man? How's it going, everybody? How's good to be back. <laughs> day, day number two. Day number two. I already see a lot of familiar names in the chat. Voodoo Val, of course, Jose, Alberto. Um, it's a beautiful morning here in San Francisco, California. Let us know where in the world you're watching from. Matt is from? Tampa, Florida. Yeah, well, no, where are you from? Yeah. Oh, where I'm from. Where I grew, well, I grew up in New Jersey. New Jersey, yeah. Grew up in New Jersey, and then I moved to Tampa to go to college. Nice, nice. I never went back. <laughs> never went back. Yeah, yeah so um, before we get started, I would like to mention a few housekeeping things. First of all, the schedule for today. Um, this morning, we started with Kathleen Martin doing a daily creative challenge. Then is us creating photo presets with Matt Klaskowski. We have Andrea right after that at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Then we have Shanti at noon. And then we're gonna end the day with Andrew at 2 p.m. doing Adobe Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So make sure that you stick around the whole day and learn Photoshop, XD, Illustrator, basically the whole creative suite. Awesome. Awesome. Um, we're seeing in the chat now that we have people from uh, Spain, Damien from the UK, um, we got Washington DC in the house. Um, Germany. <laughs> Germany, nice. St. Pete Beach, <laughs> woo! That's, that's, that's me. That's you, that, yeah, that, that, that's your people. Yeah, it's nice. about 30 minutes away from nice. where I live. Uh, Whib what is that, Whib Bay Island? Whidbey <laughs> Island. Whidbey Island, Island, Washington. I think I need some uh, contacts <laughs> now. Um, Sweden, nice, Camila from Sweden. And um, also before we get started, there's one very, very important thing to mention. In about 30 minutes, we're gonna have the chat and win, so make sure that you stick around for that. We're, there's gonna be an opportunity to win the uh, sticker mule stickers that you're seeing like right above our heads. And all you have to do is log in and um, make a comment when we ask a question, but make, uh, be sure to comment all throughout the stream. Also, we're gonna do a daily creative challenge review, so make sure that if you watch Kathleen's stream that you submit the work onto Discord so that Matt and I can give you some suggestions on how to improve your work. Awesome, and that was fun yesterday. That was really fun yesterday. It was good. But there's one more very, very important thing to announce, and it's my good friend Matt Glaskowski's birthday Aww. today. He thought that Aww, I forgot, shucks. so happy birthday, Matt. Thanks. Uh, finally 21. Finally so, 21. Congratulations. I can, I can, I can <laughs> just start so, being able to vote too. So. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm yeah. not yeah. So, um, right, so oh, we should so we should pose to the chat. So I, and I said it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I said it, I don't know if anybody was listening. So how old? Oh, how old? Wow. Wow. And you can go over. I don't care. I I'm, <laughs> I I, I literally don't care about age. So yeah. I don't care if somebody guesses like 65. Like it's okay. I don't I'm, I'm, I'm hope I, I My guess 60. was 21, so I hope I got that right. Yeah. Um but yeah, so everybody's saying happy birthday, Matt, in the chat. So yeah, thank happy you, birthday. Yeah. Thank you so for spending So they got to guess how old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they'll win, but yeah. they'll guess how old. Nobody nobody wants to guess, Nobody wants to guess. I'm only saying happy birthday, happy guess. birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah, so They're thanks. just going to go 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thanks for spending your birthday with us, by the way. No problem. Awesome. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? So uh, somebody got it. Oh, somebody. <laughs> hey, they, they either went 21 or the people that remembered yesterday yeah. was 47. Yeah. So, so uh, Alberto said 38. I'll 38. be 38 on my next birthday. Yeah. Awesome. Now I can drive a car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at it, but I yeah. can. Awesome. So anyway, so we are talking presets. Um, talking, you know, all kinds of different presets. Yesterday is a quick recap. Uh, we we really spent our time inside of Lightroom. We mm -hmm. talked about Lightroom presets, all the different places that you can use them. So I'm not necessarily, I'm not going to go over all mm -hmm. of that all over again. There's a whole show you can go back and watch from yesterday. Um, so what we had done is we created some presets in Lightroom. Um, we showed different places to apply presets. And then I, I did some photo workflows and stuff. We left off where I started using the brush. Mm -hmm. And talking about how powerful that was, and how you can create presets for it. So I thought we'd, uh, I thought we'd pick up there. Nice. By the way, uh, RB says, Matt, you're still a young man. <laughs> I concur. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I feel young. I'm good. I'm, I'm guy, like I said, no, uh, no, no age problems here. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, so, so let's let's pick back up here. Let's go grab a photo. I think this will be a good one. It's a little bit overexposed, so probably. Bring that exposure down. Bring that shadows up a little bit, right around, right around there. But let's uh, let's go jump back into that brush tool because I think there's just there's so many things that we can do with. I'm gonna warm this up. Sorry, I'm gonna 
I'm like, I always say like, I'm not gonna do all these little tiny things to it and I still end up doing it because I feel like I have to. It's like, oh wait, I just gotta nudge it just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I, I think, you know, tone wise, I think the scene looks nice. To me, where we can improve it is is to start drawing attention to and from different places. So mm -hmm. let's head back to this brush tool where we finished up yesterday. And I showed how I can create little presets here. You can see I've got a, a plenty inside of there, but I've got basically dodging and burning, which mm -hmm. is just brightening and darkening if we were to just keep it super simple. So what I would do is, and I'm gonna give people the the one of the best tips when it comes to using this tool is, You'll, you'll typically go in here and you'll start to move your sliders like mm -hmm. I'm doing here. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna come back in here and you're just gonna wanna move one slider mm -hmm. and you don't wanna go in here and zero everything out. But if right. you double click on the word effect up there, mm -hmm. it resets all the sliders ah, to zero. Magic. So let's go in here and let's bring the exposure down and let's paint a little bit on this back wall here because I don't want that to take up any of your attention. So we'll paint around the waterfall. A uh, little trick with the brush here, if uh, you're fairly new to the brush, I don't even have to be perfect about it. In fact, I'd prefer you weren't perfect. You'll notice how my, my brush, um, notice how my brush is a larger brush. You can see that inner ring and then you can see that outer ring. So it's a highly feathered brush. The feather is set to 100% over here. And that to me is the key to how I can just swipe here. Let's erase this. That's the key of how I can just swipe right along the bottom there and nobody sees a line. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see a line show up because I'm using a really feathered brush which hides your tracks. And I think it responds more like light too. Right. So light feathers off. So I would paint the whole thing and then I'd go over onto my brushes. And if you go down here to erase, I can then hit the left bracket key, make that a little bit smaller. And then I can just go through here. Nice. And erase. And again, I'm using a really feathered brush. So you're not gonna see it really hides your tracks from there. So simple change, you know, that's before. That's after, and then you can always come in here and adjust it. And if I wanted to see my mask, how would I do that? Uh, you can hit the letter O oh. for overlay. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh. all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hit the letter O for overlay, and that'll turn it on nice. and off. Uh, there's a little checkbox for it that's down in the toolbar. Oh, it's mm -hmm. just, I think the easiest thing is just remember O for overlay, mm -hmm. and just remember to turn it off. And then uh, is it Shift O to switch the colors? Uh, shift O, let's see here, yes. Yeah. So and maybe you're painting like uh, roses or something. Yeah, where and, you wouldn't and, see red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So shift O will change the colors. Nice. Okay. By the way, quick question. Um, how do you make the silky effect? The silky effect is done by a longer exposure. Mm -hmm. um, so I can go up here and look at the histogram. This will give me my photo info. So if you were to look at this photo, so this was shot at, this was eight seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you get that, you, you're on a tripod, hopefully, because nobody can <laughs> handhold for eight seconds. Um, but yeah, it's so shot at eight seconds now, I, and I don't recall whether or not I used a filter on my camera for this, mm -hmm. the dark neutral density filters, mm -hmm. but it was pretty dark in this area, so if you're shooting water near beaches and uh, at sunrise and sunset, like before the sun comes up or after the sun goes down, or mm -hmm. you're shooting waterfalls in this little cove that I was in, mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't even need a filter because there'll be so little light that mm. your exposure, your, your your shutter speed will actually be long enough to uh, to do it without. Nice. Do you ever use the brush on people? And if you do, is it still super feathered? Um, yes, yes, I use the brush on people. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look at a All couple right. of people cool. examples. So depending on what we're doing, we might feather it or not, but yeah, we'll take a look. All right, at Nancy, we're gonna look at people in a moment. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so we're doing a little bit of darkening there. Then I would come over here to the brush and hit new. And then I would probably increase the exposure a little bit and add some texture to this. Nice. And I would probably go and start painting on some of these rocks in the foreground. Like so, and again, between texture and exposure, you can see if I delete that, oh. we're able to draw attention up there. Yeah, I like that little poof when you delete the... I know. The, <laughs> if you have your volume on too, it goes... <laughs> anyway, 
Um, and then from there, I would probably go and I click new again and maybe pull back on that texture, maybe work a little bit higher on the exposure, even some uh, shadows. And then I would just paint a little bit over here. And a lot of times I like to just be random about it. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like give yourself a couple like little places <laughs> that are more bright and less bright and even add some warmth to it. Um, Rocky Montez Carr, who I think Rocky, you know, says, I know Rocky. Hi. Yeah, what's up, up Rocky? Buddy? Just saw him in Vegas a couple of days ago. How's it going, Rocky? Oh man, excellent photographer or retoucher. Oh, yeah. He does all kinds of work. Um, very good at Rocky's doing, the man. Yeah, he does a lot of um, cinema graphs for a lot. He does of, really cool cinema graphs. Yeah, cinema graphs. Yeah. So a lot. Of, if you ever go to Vegas, a lot of the work that you see like on the casinos and billboards and stuff, that's Rocky. Yeah. So check Rocky out on his Behance page because I think you can just click on his name and see his work. Cool. Yeah. So this was a uh, this was actually a good example where I brighten the the background here because <clears throat> whenever you brighten up things that are dark, mm -hmm. they'll tend to be very cold. Yeah, because shadows tend to have a colder color temperature. So you'll notice I'll always when I'm brightening like a dark background, I'll typically set my temperature a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. You can see how it gets yeah. warmer there. So these are all great brushes to create. I come up here. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to save current preset. And I would call this, you know, uh, bright, warm background, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I could go to my darkening brush and call that, you know, darken background, yeah. whatever it happens to be, but bright, warm background. And then I probably make another preset called bright background. Mm -hmm. So that way, if I knew I didn't need to warm it, I could just brighten the background. If I wanted to make sure I warmed it too, because I thought it was getting colder, I could switch, you know, I could switch those brushes. But they'll all show up alphabetically right inside of this list here. Mm -hmm. So if you like if I want bright warm background and then darkened background, but maybe like I use darkened background all the time, sometimes I'll name it with an O1 mm. in front of it, like O1, O2, O3, right. and that way they they show toward the top of the list there. So uh, you don't have to keep scrolling up and down to find it. Talking about brushes, do you um, always use a trackpad? Do you use a mouse at home? Do you use a, a tablet? What do, you, <laughs> what do you prefer in like your so real everyday? My work? real everyday life, yeah. I have a Wacom, okay, cool. uh, Wacom medium size yeah, pen and tablet that's what at I home. Have. Yeah. So the Wacom, uh, I use the Intuos Pro models. I don't like the kind where you draw on the screen. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't have, and trust me, you can find <laughs> out very quickly that I don't have any traditional art background. <laughs> so you, I don't have any tactile feel for a brush or a pencil mm -hmm. or a, a color. Any, yeah. I don't have any of that. Right. So having a screen where I do that doesn't do anything for me because I, I never entered right. the world that way. Right. So, um, so I just, I like the pen and tablet because it's super accurate. Yeah. Um, I always equate it to you know, for the accuracy of brushing, imagine signing your name with a mouse. Mm -hmm. You know, have, imagine how sloppy your name would be, but imagine how precise mm -hmm. you can sign it with a right. pen and tablet. Right. So, so it's kind of a lot of Yeah, I was just lines. asking because um, I don't present with a tablet, but I do use a tablet at home. And the reason I don't present with a tablet is because I'm lazy and I don't want to carry it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and I don't I, have to be that precise when I'm presenting, yeah. usually. I, I, so I have, I have gotten really good at a trackpad. Mm -hmm. um, I traveled extensively for about 10 or 12 years where yeah. I spent a lot of time on airplanes. Yeah. And I got really good at editing like <laughs> this <Yeah. laughs> in a plane seat. So yeah. And, uh, and also I what I do the... when editing on planes and stuff like that is with Lightroom, you can like hover over a key and, and what is it? Use the up and down arrow keys. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, you can use to, up and down arrow yeah, keys too. When you ho hover over any of the sliders. So it's a, um, a really uh, useful thing to use yeah. when you're on a plane or something like that that you don't really you can't use your tablet or yeah. your mouse. By the way, we have 14 minutes left for the chat and win, so make sure that you logged into Behance so you can make a comment so you have an opportunity to win the Sticker Mule stickers. That's going to be in about 15 minutes or 14 minutes now. Cool. All right. So, <laughs> well, what we got? Uh, what is that? Villanita said, "Chat and win. It's my day." It's Sorry, my day. Guys, <laughs> guys. Yeah. So hopefully. <sighs> Hopefully, uh, Villanita's wins today. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Put in a good word. Make sure that you leave a lot of comments, though. All right. So back to uh, back to our image. So you got the brushes and the presets. <laughs> Hopefully, you can see how powerful um, that can be. You know, there's it's to me one of the most powerful tools here. But here's what's really neat about about doing it this way. So I'm going to close close my brush, and now let's say we switch to let's go switch to a different photo here. Um, here let's switch over to this one. So now let's say we switch to a different photo. 
What's really nice about this is the preset that I just created for the brush actually works the same way for the radial filter mm -hmm. and the graduated filter. So you, every preset that you have will live in there. Those filters just work in a little bit of a different way. So as an example here, um, I could take the radial filter and I could just maybe go with, let's go with that bright warm background mm -hmm. and I could drag a circle. Now, as fate would have it, and your version of Lightroom will probably be like mine, and that is it senses what you're trying to do and it decides it's gonna do the opposite. <laughs> so, so you notice how it put the effect on the outside of the filter. All you do is come down here and click invert. So you nice. invert that, now it goes on the inside of the filter. It's just, the, it's just, you know. And by the way, I think that's Adobe Sensei, the artificial intelligence yeah. trying to mess with you. Yeah, it just, it knows, <laughs> it's it like, yeah, let's, let's mess with it. It just always seems to be the opposite yeah. of what I'm looking for, so, but um, it, there's nothing wrong with the tool. <laughs> but a lot of times I'll do, I'll do what I just did here. And, and so if we were to take a look at, at this scene here, I would say, I would say the light is probably somewhere, I'm looking at the clouds. Mm -hmm. So somewhere top right-ish up mm -hmm. here. So what I might do is... And what do you mean when you say you're looking at the clouds? Like, how like would I'm, I... So I'm looking at the clouds and I see dark edges over here and I see bright edges mm -hmm. over here. So I know the sun's gotta be somewhere right. like... It up. would be impossible for the sun to be on the other side Yeah, the shadows are under the cloud. Yeah, exactly. Got it. So I'm thinking sun's somewhere up here. Casting, then I think it's casting down. It's up here in the top right and it's gotta be casting mm -hmm. down. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just skim mm. some light to help enhance the scene a little bit. You could see there's sun on there. Right, you know, I'm right. not adding that, but I just help bring it out a little bit, skim it, I, I use the term skim, skim it across the mountains, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And then what's really nice, and a lot, of people, a lot of people miss this, is because what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to brighten the sky up there. And obviously light would not, if it was mm -hmm. beaming down on the mountain, it wouldn't be brightening right. the sky up here as well. But because we use that radio filter, we can go over here, see the word brush? Yep. So it's different from this brush. Mm -hmm. This brush means I wanna paint something on and off. Okay. But this brush means I can erase or add to the effect. So I can click on brush, I can go down here and click on erase, and now I can erase that away mm -hmm. from the sky. Yeah. So now I'm not like overly brightening the sky, but I've added some interest mm -hmm. to the foreground. And not to separate your toes or anything, but when I do this, I actually like to have the overlay on so that I could see what, yeah. Yeah. Cause that way you know, oh, I missed the, you know, like I yeah. went too far into the mountain. I'll undo like you just did there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's actually sometimes really good to have the overlay on just because it's hard to see what you're painting over. And you don't want little glows on right, the edges right. that are small and you don't see yeah. it until the photo's yeah. a little bit big. Eddie commented, I'd never bother with uh, these presets, but you're showing good examples here. Awesome. Awesome. Nancy, uh, I never thought to look at the clouds. <laughs> like, oh, I never thought, oh. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that's uh, that's an example of what you can, you know, it doesn't have to be the brush. Yeah. It could be the radio filter. Yeah. Um, and then as, you know, another example here, we can go to, we can go to something like this photo. Ooh. Where was that shot? Uh, this is shot in Clearwater Beach, right nice. near my house. Nice. So I'd go over to this photo. You know, guys, honestly, a lot of times I just hit auto. <laughs> <laughs> um, auto does a really good job. I, it, it's actually still probably a little bit too dark, but uh -huh. when you have a photo like this, and you're gonna see another one of these as we get into, cause we're gonna start talking about Photoshop actions okay, and stuff cool. too. Um, a lot of times when you have a photo like this, number one, keep in mind, that there's, there's no humanly way possible that your camera can capture this the way that you see it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stand here, we're gonna see all of these colors in the sky, we're gonna see the sky exposed the way we want, and we're gonna see all of this detail here in the foreground. All right, we would, when I was standing here, this wasn't almost black mm -hmm. to me. Right. You know? So what's gonna happen when you got a really contrasty scene like that is, I'll, I'll say you you develop your basic stuff mm -hmm. for one part of the photo. Okay. Pick a part. I usually pick I usually pick the foreground of the photo. Okay. All right. And what, if it's a portrait, it can be with a portrait. It can be with a travel photo. It can be whatever. But if there's sky and some kind of foreground that's dark, pick one part of the photo. So 
In this case, I'll develop for the foreground. So we're gonna look at the rocks. So we're looking at the rocks, okay. we're looking at the water, all this stuff here. And I actually don't like, like when I pull back highlights, sometimes it does really good, but you can see it like pulls back all the highlights on the photo. Mm -hmm. um, to me, sometimes it starts to look fake. So if I have that, I won't worry about it yet because I know we're gonna talk about the sky in just mm -hmm. a second. So I'm looking at the foreground and I think we're, I think we did pretty good here. Maybe a little bit of texture. And then, now I obviously have a too bright sky. I can't reduce the exposure, even though all that information is there, right? Mm -hmm. we, we know that the sky looks good, but I can't reduce exposure, because that makes everything dark. I don't like the, what highlights was doing to it, so now we can come over here to the grad filter. So it does the same thing as a brush, same thing as radial, it just does it in a, a straight line. So I'll double click effect, and I'll bring the exposure negative, and then I'll just click and drag right over the sky. And so now I've got a way to darken the mm -hmm. sky that's independent mm -hmm. of the foreground. All right, so if you look at the before and the after. So what you'll see me do a lot of is again, create different presets. Mm -hmm. I'll do, you know, sky, sky dark one, sky dark two, sky dark, just different versions of presets so that I save these things and then I just pop up here and I click on my preset mm -hmm. and I can darken the sky. And a right. lot of, you also see, I'll add color to it. Sometimes I'll add more blue. So I'll do sky dark mm -hmm. blue. Sometimes I'll add some more warmth. So sky dark, uh, you know, warm. Right. A uh, little bit of red in there. A little bit of red and blue will give it kind of that purpley mm -hmm. type feeling. So almost twilight-ish when you go to the blue and to the right. pinks a little bit. So there's, I mean, I think that, uh, to me, there's no right answer. Like, that's creative. That's, right. What color do you think it was or did you want it to be? Or what emotion do you want it to portray? Exactly. Like the yeah. cooler blues and stuff, that gives you a kind of a more subdued feeling. Yeah. Where warms and oranges give you more of like a mm -hmm. lively type of a feeling. I just discovered live in Behance. Great. Welcome, Jolanda. Rocky said, I always use auto first just to see what it does to the image. Usually yeah. makes a great baseline. Uh, nice point. Develop for the background makes sense. I go there first mm -hmm. from Kerry. Awesome. Yeah. So just cool. uh, keep leaving your comments, questions. We're gonna do the chat and win in about six minutes. So make sure you're logged into Behance. If you're watching from YouTube, go over into Behance.net/live. Make sure you log in so you have a chance to win the sticker mule stickers that we're gonna do in about five minutes. I'm and I'm curious. Uh, so what does everybody like to shoot out there? Oh, so yeah. chat room, like what What do you guys like to shoot? Cause I've got different photos. I mean, I've got my outline, yeah. but I can, well, if, we if can you weave in and out of things too. If so. you look at my phone, it's cats, but. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, I didn't ask that. Yeah, them. Yeah. Oh, oh, them. So yeah. what do you guys like yeah. to shoot? So feel free to, uh, feel yeah, free to, to leave a comment in there. I'm, I'm curious and I can, I can change things up and even, even start oh, to, there you go. to go that way too. Yeah. But um, the other thing that's pretty cool is and we didn't talk about this too much with presets, but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make a, a new preset. So not a graduated filter preset. I'm gonna go over here and make a, a preset in my presets panel. And what I can do is turn off, I'll click check none, and I can turn on just graduated filters. Mm -hmm. And what this will do, so let's call this, I'm gonna call this uh, dark sky uh, top. All right, you know, top third, something like that. Dark sky, top third. Right. All right. I'll hit create. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it down mm -hmm. here. And then I'm gonna go and call this one dark sky, sky middle. All right. And I'm just turning on the graduated filter and hit create. So the, the presets that we see over here on the right hand side, these aren't putting anything onto the photo. They're just setting the settings, which you then brush or do something mm -hmm. with on the photo. But the presets over on the left-hand side that we just created, they actually will remember where this was on the photo. So as an example, if I switch gears, let's just switch over to, let's switch over to this photo. Let's make it a little bit brighter so we can see the dark sky. Switch over to this photo here, if I go and I click on this preset, you could just see it just dropped a grad filter right into the middle for me. Mm -hmm. And then if I go and click on the top one, it just dropped one up on that top third. Nice. 
So you, another way that you can create presets if you're a landscape photographer is these take the place of that neutral density grad filter we used to hold up in front of the camera. But do, you know, dark sky one, dark sky two, dark sky three, dark sky top third, middle, bottom third, whatever. Mm -hmm. And now, and what's really cool about this, we didn't talk about this yesterday, especially like the vignettes, there's a preview. Mm -hmm. So the way that I use, I use presets, all right? And I've, I've got a lot that I've created over the years. So I've got a folder of landscape presets. The way that I use them is for inspiration sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when I look at a photo and I'm stuck on what to do with it, I'll go over here and open a folder of presets and I'll just hover and scroll through and see all the different options that I get. And what'll happen is something will, you'll look at it and you'll be like, mm -hmm. huh, I never thought of that. Like I wasn't gonna take the photo that way. This is a hard photo to do it on because it's just a bright, bright photo, but yeah, yeah let's go jump over. Like yeah. a little wildlife, you know? And a two minute warning for the chat and win. Again, make sure you're logged into Behance and we gotta think of a question that we're gonna give them in about two minutes. Let's not say it now, but let's, okay. let's try to think of one and you'll have an opportunity to win 100 Sticker Mule stickers. So make sure that you leave a comment when we ask that question. I got one, I got one. Oh, you got I got a very, right. very simple one. Good, yeah, not even, all right. Awesome. Not as hard as yesterday, which was figure out uh -oh. what song Jesus likes to <laughs> karaoke to. <laughs> anyway, so you just hover over them and they'll show you a preview and it'll take you, sometimes takes you to something you didn't think of. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't really thinking that you were gonna take the photo into that direction. Right. So, that's, if you're wondering like how to use presets, that's one of the ways to use them. That's how I use them. Right. Um, if you're new, I think presets can be a good learning tool. I think, you know, we, as you make a preset of something that you like, or maybe you've downloaded them mm -hmm. off of the internet, you can click on it and then you can dissect over on the yeah. right hand what yeah. was added to it. And yeah. so they, they, they work in different ways for different people, yeah. and, so. And in Photoshop, I actually do that with actions. If I see a cool action, I'm like, oh, how mm -hmm. did they do that? And you can see, you can dissect it, as you said, to figure out how it was created. Yeah. So same same idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Paco has great hair, I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody asked, is it possible to export the preset? It sure is. Uh, you go over here to your presets panel and you right click, and then you just go over to export. Cool, oh, you gotta and move you, your head. <laughs> oh, sorry. <Yeah. laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, you right click on a preset and you go over to export. Export, nice. And that'll let you export it to your desktop, <clears throat> and then you could give it to somebody, share it with somebody. There was actually a lot of good questions that I wanted to ask after the chat and win, so maybe that's what we start back up. Okay, yeah, we'll couple, start. A couple good questions that I, that I saw, cool. and I didn't wanna interrupt your- No, 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 no problem. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so when we talk about the brush, the radial, the graduated filter, that's some of the ways that I start to use it to create presets. We've got 20 set here, I'll do, you know what, let's just, I'll talk about, I'll talk about one little preference for this and I'll okay. come back to that after. Right. Remember how I showed you when you ho hover over these, they, they show that? If you don't have that turned on or you're not seeing it, it's actually a preference. If you go in your preferences and you go to your presets tab over here, um, and I believe it's under interface. Let's go for interface. Oh man, it's somewhere. You ever notice like it's right in front of you? Yeah, and uh, you know what? I'll be honest, I would help you, but I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's right in front of you, yeah. and yet you can't see yeah. it here. Let's well, see. We're gonna do the chat and win, and well, then we'll No, we'll I gotta back find to it, it's gonna bug me. All right, Well, while we're right. doing the chat and win, you'll figure that out. I will, so I will. So what's the, the chat and win? Um, Lightroom or Photoshop? Ooh, that's a really good one. Lightroom or Photoshop? Lightroom or Photoshop, very yeah. simple. Lightroom or Photoshop. All right, yeah. I know what I'm... All right. So keep people people keep uh, typing Paco. I don't know what Adobe app that is. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, Priestess from Spanish script Paco Paco. <laughs> what did I miss? LOL Paco um, LR Photoshop definitely Photoshop all the way. Uh, I'm with you on that one. Lightroom Photoshop 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 Priestess and photo. I'm seeing more Photoshops than Lightrooms. I don't know what you think, Matt. Uh yeah. Uh, Photoshop is slightly winning, I would say. Yeah. I mean, 
maybe by a couple <laughs> couple boats, but it seems. Oh, the, Carolyn is really into Lightroom. Lightroom Photoshop. I said thirty years, 30 of, years Photoshop, of Photoshop. That's right. Awesome. So while they're while they're you here, do you want to talk for one second while they're still coming in? So it's funny because a lot of people think like people I think guess like I would I would pick Lightroom. Yeah. And I love Lightroom, <laughs> but. <laughs> and we have some problems if you ever tried to take Lightroom away from me. Yeah, right. But Photoshop is actually the one I can't live without. Right. You know. Well, and and Eddie <clears throat> has a, uh, an interesting po uh, point. Eddie wrote Photoshop is Lightroom inside. That's technically accurate. Yeah. Technically accurate. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's got Adobe Camera Raw, which is the develop the, module yeah. in Lightroom. Yeah. Um, it's just you know if you've got multiple photos, yeah. if you want to edit a full photo shoot. Yeah, camera oh. raw and Photoshop. And congratulations can be. to Carolyn Brown for <laughs> winning uh, today's chat and win. So <laughs> you're gonna get a message um, privately on Behance to figure out how to receive your prize. Also, if you didn't win today, you can go into slash adobe live 20 and you can get 10 uh, custom 3x3 die cut stickers for $1. Wow. All right, $1, 10 stickers. Awesome. All right. All right, so um, I had a few interesting oh, questions. Here. I did find the setting. Oh, all it's right. It's under performance. So performance, and you will see it says enable hover preview of presets in loop. So that's what needs to be turned on nice. for you to hover over the presets and see them on the screen there. By the way, if you have a older, slower computer-ish, that might be something to turn off. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're trying to, you know, right. you're trying to save on on processing power and all that stuff. So consider turning that off if you find Lightroom's running a little bit mm -hmm. slow because it does take some energy to uh, to make those. So I had a good question here, <coughs> um, but don't you end up with a thousand presets to scroll through? Because you were talking about making all those different presets with different, you know, like uh, cool ones, warm ones. So the yeah, question yeah. was, if you end up with so many presets, isn't it difficult to scroll through them? it might take longer than it would to just make the adjustment. So that was the question. Um, it could, it's, you know what it is, is sometimes I forget what adjustments I really like. Oh, okay. <laughs> so sometimes I forget what's in there. So it's, you know, it's, it could be. If I know I'm just gonna move one slider, yeah, I might not make a preset for it. Right. But if it's gonna be a combination of four or five sliders that I have found that I've tuned over time that really work well for something, I'll do it. Also keep in mind this. Um, the reason why you see so many in this list here is because I, I've got brush packs that mm -hmm. I sell on my mm -hmm. website, um, mattk.com. But, <laughs> but no, but beyond that, I'm actually teaching you how to make them, yeah. so you don't have to go buy them. Right. <clears throat> but the reason why you see that again is I think for somebody just starting out, this helps. Right. This helps, they can look at this and decide what they wanna do. Do I want brighter with texture? Do I wanna brighten shadows? Do I wanna brighten highlights? They can figure out what they wanna do, click on it, and then go look at the sliders and learn from it. So mm -hmm. I don't know that it, it, it works for all people in all phases of their, their learning, where for somebody out there that maybe asked that question, yeah, maybe you only need five presets. Right. You, know, you don't need a whole list of them. You only need five or six of them because you know what you wanna do and you know that you can go in there and tweak the sliders pretty mm -hmm. quickly. So just, just different people use it in different ways. Nice. Um, also, I'm going to rephrase this question a little bit just to like make it more general, but like how do you, what's like your personal method of organizing your presets? Like what would make, how do you organize them to make sense? So, so bad news first, I'll, good news or bad news? Uh, we'll go with bad news I'm first. a bad news first yeah, guy. I'm like, get, get, get it too. over with me and too. then I'll, let me end I'll on a high note. I'll take the hit, then, then I'll yeah, feel yeah. better, <laughs> you know? So bad news first is this side with your brush, your gradial, great gradial gradient and radial filter, um, you can't organize them. They are gonna be in this list. Uh, They're gonna be in this big list and there's nothing you can do mm -hmm. um, other than just name them to alphabetically. Over here on the other side with your presets panel, when you click that plus icon mm -hmm. to create a preset, you get a choice to group them. Okay. So I group them usually in terms of subject matter, uh -huh. landscapes, wildlife, portraits, black and white. Um, that's typically how I'll group them. And pro tip, so there's no way to come over here and just right click and create a folder. Okay. Um, you'll see there's just, there's nothing that says create folder or create group or anything like that. 
So a little tip for you is, is if you want, like I don't have, I do have a black and white, but let's pretend I didn't have a black and white folder. I could go over here and add a new preset and then I could go to new group and I could call it whatever I could call mm -hmm. it black and white, put a dummy preset in there. Mm -hmm. Once there's a dummy preset inside of something, I can then drag and drop mm. in, into those. So then right. just delete, just right click and hit delete on the dummy preset. Right. So um, you just create a dummy preset first and then you can organize them any way you want. Nice. Um, another question from earlier is, if you have made edits and then apply a preset, how can you tell if it will override those previous edits? There's not really a way. <laughs> um, <laughs> wish, Any wish good I news? Had... Is that the bad news? No good news on yeah, this one? Yeah, there's no good news on that one. I mean, I could show you, I could show you that if you go over and right click on any preset and you choose show and finder, it will show you where that preset is. Mm -hmm. It'll be usually, if you're using the newer version, it's an XMP file. You could then go and open up that preset with, let's go over to, you could open up that preset with a text editor, like so. <laughs> <laughs> and you could look inside of there and see what settings uh, were saved. If yeah. you can read through all that gook that's inside of there. Right. Um, but you could look in there and you could see what settings were saved. I don't recommend it. Remember I just said it's really just bad news. Right. I don't think that that is a viable option, but for those of you that want to go crazy, yeah, <laughs> you could you could go into it. But yeah, they don't, they don't list what was in the preset. Yeah. I'm with you. So Eddie commented about using the underscores and the dashes um, for grouping yeah. things alphabetically. So that's one way you can yeah, do it. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, ready to move on? Yeah, there's so, no, those are the questions that I had from earlier. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I, I got to those before we moved on. Cool. Oh, one last thing. We have design feedback in about 50 minutes. So make sure that you submit the work that you created with Kathleen earlier today. Matt and I will be giving you our thoughts in about 51 minutes. So and that's on uh, Discord, cool. by the way, and I'm sure somebody in the chat could post the link to Discord so you can click on that and submit the work on the current challenge section on Discord. All right, so um, back to, let's finish up on the, uh, the whole brush gradient thing, and that is don't just use it for brightening and darkening. Mm -hmm. So here you've got some hazy-ish mountains off in the distance. And this is just atmospheric perspective. Right. Um, so what we can do is go over here, go to my brush, crank up dehaze, maybe a little bit of clarity, maybe even a little bit of texture, and then maybe a hair brighter. Mm -hmm. And then I can go and I can paint it. Nice. Let's get that a little bit here. I'm gonna crank it up a little higher just because video is always a little right. harder to see things. But I, I know I would never do it this, this badly, <laughs> but you can see. But I'm gonna teach it to you that way. No, because yeah. <laughs> no, a lot of times you have to um, make extremes so that the changes are noticeable. Yeah. But when you're doing it in, you know, in real life, you gotta crank it down. You and I are looking at 4K screens right. or big screens right. and everybody else is seeing a smaller well, right. like they're probably crunched under, down video. Yeah, they could be on their cell phones or. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, but uh, dehazing things. Dehaze, dehaze is, is one of the best sliders inside of here. Yeah. Um, the problem is, is it's it's generally never gonna look good on the whole photo, all right? I would never I would never go over to my basic panel and just crank up dehaze like that, right? Because you can see it just doesn't look good, all right? But when we go over and we brush it on, now we can just brush it onto the spots and the places in the photo that we want. And it's pretty subtle, but if I turn it on and off, you'll see it. Nice. So these are all little things. Like these mm -hmm. are the little things I think that make the biggest difference in photo editing. Um, I'll show you one more example and then we'll move on from this. So before we go, there's a question there. And yeah. I, I get this question a lot. Um, what is the easiest way to, or I'm just going to paraphrase it here. Uh, how to learn, how would you learn Lightroom the easy way? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, because I, I get that question a lot and I have a way of answering that question. To, uh, I get it for Photoshop, but I want to see what your answer is for, for Lightroom. Well, I'd go to mattk.com and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'd go to the courses section yeah. and I'd know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the easy, way that I, the easy way I would learn Lightroom and the easy way I would learn Photoshop mm -hmm. would be to understand you don't need all of the features. Yeah. Um, you, you just 
you don't. You know, there's so many there's so many things that are inside of there that not everybody's going to mm -hmm. use. And I think human nature is if there's a feature there, I must need it. It's mm -hmm. there for a reason, mm -hmm. and it's somebody telling me that I need this in my photographic life. And so, as an example, when you got to when you got to learning Lightroom or anything, and you look over here, understand the tone curve is just another way to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so you might not have to learn it. If you're mm -hmm. happy moving the contrast slider mm -hmm. and you think your photos look good, then you know maybe you don't need the tone curve. Um, you know, that split toning gets used on maybe a half a percent of mm -hmm. my photos. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's always, always closed. Um, not everything needs transform. Not everything needs, most things don't need calibration. So uh, I think, I think number picking apart that the fact that you don't have to learn everything yeah. um, is a big thing. And then I'm even going to take that question over to Photoshop yeah. because I did I did a video on this the other week. So as a photographer, and that's what I'm coming to. I'm not coming to you from a graphic design standpoint. Mm -hmm. If you're a photographer and you're trying to learn Lightroom or even Photoshop, more importantly, when you take out the fact that exposure and shadows and highlights and sharpening and lens corrections and noise reduction are all done in your raw editor here. Mm -hmm. Photoshop goes from this, this massive, I don't get my hand out there. <laughs> Photoshop goes, <laughs> I'm looking at my cell phone, like my hand went. So Photoshop goes from this massive program that how am I gonna conquer this? But you've just taken that many features mm -hmm. away. Right. And now Photoshop becomes a much smaller program mm -hmm. to learn. Now, oh, what do I need? Distraction removal, mm -hmm. maybe some type. Uh, maybe I want to replace a sky, mm -hmm. so I need selections. Mm -hmm. I need to know some filters, layers. But layers, but Photoshop becomes a much easier program. Yeah. So, long and, answer. But. Yeah, and and the only thing I would add to that is that just just go ahead and do it and try it. Like I feel that a lot of people watch a lot of videos. Hey, watch all my videos. I would love for you to watch all my videos. Yeah. But like, don't just watch videos. Like, actually get your hands dirty and try it. Because I think that you learn a lot more by making mistakes and, and, and doing something wrong than just watching 30 videos and not really doing anything with them. And that's, that's a great point. So I will, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tie that back in. Like years ago, uh, I, I still play the guitar today, but when I, was, uh, when I was in my teens, I would gobble up all of the information mm -hmm. I possibly could. And you know what I spent most of my time doing? I spent most of my time reading magazines <laughs> and practicing scales yeah. and practicing chords. And I spent very, very little time making something. Right. And out of 10 friends that I had, and I'm not just saying I'm not being cocky, out of 10 friends that I had, I, I think I was the best guitar player, but I would never go play with them because I knew that they could just jam. Mm -hmm. I knew that they could just, yeah. just solo and have fun with it and everything like that. And I never practiced that stuff and I never got good at it. So right. I would say, yeah, it's good to practice. It's good to learn. It's good to read, but you need almost a one-to-one -one of practicing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I concur. Okay. And one more question is the new LR, so Lightroom CC good enough, or do we need to use classic to do it, to do so, it? I don't know if it's to do it right or to do it comma right. <laughs> so Carolyn, this answer is probably going to get me kicked out of the Adobe building. Uh oh. <laughs> But Should I start calling security? Start now? calling security <laughs> now. It's going to get me kicked out of here. But I would say, as a if you are a DSLR mirrorless photographer, where mm -hmm. you've got big files, big hard drive space, all that mm -hmm. stuff, I would say Lightroom Classic is still generally where you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, the new Lightroom, the cloud-based Lightroom, it's it's getting there. Like it's it's almost right there and it's surpassed Lightroom Classic in some ways, mm -hmm. but there's still a few things it's not quite there yet. And to me, the storage aspect of it, especially mm -hmm. again for a DSLR mirrorless photographer that might be shooting a lot like gigabytes and gigabytes of photos, I think we're still on Classic, but don't count the other one out yet because my guess is, is within a very, very short amount of time, um, I'm, I know I want to use it, and it's not quite there yet. And once it gets there, I know I'm gonna move mm -hmm. over to it because right, right. how do you how do you beat the fact that I just put my photos in and they're backed up on every device I have? Right. Like <clears throat> you can't beat that. Right. So. But also stress the fact that you're like a very specific user. 
that. mirrorless DSLR. Yeah. If if you're like you know I you know I maybe get out and shoot once a month. Even I have a mirrorless DSLR once a month. Most of my photos are on the iPhone. Yeah, I, I'd say the other Lightroom is, is the place to go. And if you don't know what go. that means, mirrorless D DSLR, you're probably okay on <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, CC. absolutely. It's more when storage space yeah. starts creeping up and. Again, you know, we're not like we're quite there, but yeah. it's going to get there. Right. It will get there. It will be the program everybody. I wants just canceled to use. security, by the way, so you're fine. <laughs> right. No, it's a great program. It's yeah. you know, I want to get there. Trust me. Okay, um, so one last example with the brush tool, and again, another example for some presets is so wildlife photos. If you're out shooting wildlife, um, we typically have to go higher ISOs, which gives us a lot of a lot more noise and and whatnot in the photo. Was this Costa Rica? This was yeah. This is uh, this, this is a squirrel monkey. No, not a squirrel monkey. Uh, white faced. So I know you do um, um, like retreat ph photography retreats in Costa Rica. Correct? I do. I do. Yeah. Every June I teach a uh, a workshop or two. Awesome. So if you want to take some uh, photos of monkeys with um, <laughs> Matt. Yeah. <laughs> v shirt or Mattk.com. If you go to mattk.com, there's an events thing. There you go. Mattk.com events. Thing. I'm assuming it's a button. Well, but a little link, at the, <laughs> top, little link yeah. at the top. Click on that and then join them in Costa Rica. Maybe I can come and like just be like your caddy and carry your <laughs> camera around or something. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm usually not shooting, I'm usually teaching. So. All right. <laughs> anyway, so um, one of the things that we have, we have noise reduction under the detail panel. And what I'll usually tell people is that you can go and you can decrease this luminance noise. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, cr we're gonna really, we're gonna zoom in here because noise is one thing that's really hard for people mm -hmm. to see. So you can decrease that luminance noise, yep. and it goes away. The problem is, is look at what it does to the fur. See how it smooths the fur too? So you would never wanna do this. I shouldn't say never. Generally on wildlife, you wouldn't want to do this to re decrease the noise in the fur. So what we do is we hold that back because the fur isn't the problem, right? I don't really see that much green there. It's this background. But we can go up here to our brush tool and we can go to uh, noise. Mm -hmm. And now I can crank the noise up and now I can brush. Oh, nice. Brush that away. So you still keep the blurry background, but the sharpness yeah, of the fur. Exactly. Nice. So I'm getting the noise out of the background. But again, these are, you know, maybe you've tuned a brush for some noise reduction and for some texture mm -hmm. and for whatnot. But these are all, again, nice little candidates um, for preset ideas. Okay, so let's start moving on into Photoshop. Right? So we are we are gonna do we're gonna do some interesting things to this photo. Um, Venice, that, right? Yeah, this is in Venice. Uh, you're probably one of the most photographed spots in Venice. <laughs> Um, I got there, and so I, I walked up on a, a sunrise, which is really the only time you can shoot in Venice because mm -hmm. it's so crowded. I walked up at sunrise, and to show you this scene, so I captured it middle of the road. Like I put my camera down, mm -hmm. everything's zeroed out, I'm on aperture priority, click, this is what the camera took. Mm -hmm. This is not what the scene looked like. If I take the exposure down, that's what the sky looked like. Like oh, I, wow. I walked up, I walked up there giddy when I started looking at that sky. <laughs> So that's what the sky looked like. And then if I take the exposure there, like that's probably more like what the foreground right. looked like to me. So this is middle of the road. Um, so as we start to, to walk through our editing, I would do the normal you know, shadows, pull back on the highlights. Again, you, know, you see it's gonna be tough to get the highlights, especially sometimes it makes a glow around some of the darker edges too. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful when we pull back the highlights. I think Shadows does a pretty good job. Option or Alt click on my whites. Showed this yesterday. And drag that until I see a white point, pull back. Something along those lines. Option or Alt click on blacks. Looks like I already have a little bit of a black point there. So a good overall base exposure. So now we go into some selective tools again. Go to your brush tool. If you've got some presets here, you know, I've got Dodge Burn. I'll just go darker overall and I'll just start to paint along the sky. There's a little tool down here called Auto Mask. And whenever I have an edge, I'll turn that on. Mm. So now I'll go and I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and I'll just paint along. Nice. Paint along the edge. 
So it automatically finds the hedge for you. Yeah. The key to this is you keep your crosshair mm. over the sky. If that crosshair dips over into the building, bad, bad things will mm -hmm. happen. So you keep your crosshair over the sky. But it's all right, just because like you were saying yesterday, anything in the unit light room you can undo. Yeah, exactly. It's cool. It's, so I'll usually go one swipe across and then one swipe back, because it actually does add to it mm -hmm. the more you paint. Detects the edges a little bit differently each time. And nice. then I turn it off to get the rest, because it, it'll, it'll, it'll be slower. Right. Um, so then I'll turn it off and get the rest of it. So something. Raul said, I was just going to ask about that auto masking. Well, yeah. Matt got it for you. So if I go, uh, if I hit the letter O, I mean, you can see, look at how crisp. Yeah. Look at how crisp that line wow. is. Once so. again, O. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. So we took care of our sky. <laughs> um, and then I would probably go in here and maybe push a little bit more blue, or if you want to go fiery with it, we can go warmer, a little bit of red into it. So that's the sky. Um, then I'd go to my brush and I'd hit new, and then I would see, again, you can use a preset, or I, mm -hmm. I know that overall I want to brighten, uh, I'll probably go brighten shadows, and so you can see it moves quite a few sliders over there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just start painting like so. And I'm gonna do it this way. What I wanna show you what I, what I would actually, what I actually think I did to this photo. Um, here's another little, uh, little trick that a lot of people don't know. Remember yesterday I said, sometimes people close mm -hmm. this and they get, they lose all those sliders. And so that's where all the sliders are. You have to open up that little triangle. But if you close it, you see how there's an amount slider here? So overall, I think that's too bright, but I can pull back nice. on amount. And it'll it'll incrementally, proportionally, whatever the word is, move all of these sliders. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like opacity. In Photoshop. In Photoshop, right. if you were to think of it. So that's one way I would do it. Sometimes when I just wanna be quick with it and, and have fun with the light, uh, sometimes I'll take the radial filter and I'll just do that. And you and, see and, it obviously yeah. goes to the outside. Adobe so. Sensei knew you wanted to Adobe go Adobe Sensei, the, yeah. yeah. So, they, just, yeah. <laughs> they like to mess with you a little bit. Adobe Sensei has a little yeah. bit of a... Uh, and we're just joking. There's no real artificial intelligence in that tool. No. <laughs> At least not yet. But sometimes I'll sometimes I'll just do that. You know, I'll just, just gradually skim it across and let it self-feather itself to the outsides mm -hmm. there. So, you know, it's... I want to say there's a rule. It's, remember yesterday we said get away from absolutes. Yeah. You know, whatever whatever one works for you and strikes you and, and, and hits you the right way is what matters. So now we've gone in here. If I hit the backslash key, you could see that's what we started with. Wow. That's what we ended with. So let's go take this one. Um, let's go take this over into Photoshop. Okay, so I've done my Lightroom stuff to it. We're gonna go photo, edit in, and we are gonna jump over into Photoshop. So this is where we're gonna take a look at actions. We haven't looked at actions yet, but they, mm -hmm. are, they, are, they are the Photoshop presets, really right. in a way, like the biggest presets inside of Photoshop. So where are we? Come on. Again, sensing fear, waiting. <laughs> there we are. There it's we a go. big file, so yeah. I guess. 61 megapixels. While of we're waiting, Venice. you can go to mattk.com. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How big is what you said? 61 megapixels. So 61 uh, megapixels. So yeah. if I go to image size, 9,500 oh pixels. Oh my across. god. So yeah, let's let's knock this down. <laughs> let's knock that down to 3,000 just to keep Photoshop moving there a little we go. faster. Which is still a pretty big right. megapixel file. Okay. So actions. Let's take a look. I want to show you the technique. Mm -hmm. And then I, and I showed it to you yesterday. I want to show you the technique and then we'll go back and we'll make an action for it. But okay. when you have a sunrise sunset photo where the sun isn't in the photo, I love adding a little bit of a glow. When the sun's in there, it's a little harder to, to, to get away with. Right. So what we do is we command or control J to duplicate the layer. Mm -hmm. We go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Mm -hmm. 
And then I said yesterday, generally double the megapixels of the camera. So, you know, if it's a 20 megapixel camera, 40. If it's like an iPhone, 12 megapixels or 10, whatever, 20. So I'll go with 40. We'll click OK. And then I'll brighten it. So I'm going to go filter, camera raw, and just go to about plus one and brighten the photo that way. And then you just change the blend mode to overlay or soft light. Okay. So again, overlay is just a punchier version of soft light. I'm going to go overlay because it, it's a little over the top, but then you can always reduce the opacity, right? I might even switch this one to soft light. There we go. So when you look at the photo, Again, it, it's really weird because you're thinking you're blurring the photo, mm -hmm. but it's got this glow. That's without. So it just gives a softness to everything. And I love what it does to the things that are lit. I love what it does to some of the colors in the sky. I don't know. I might want to go overlay. I'm really torn here, Jesus. I'm going <laughs> to go overlay because you know what we're going to do? We're going to look at a uh, another. Well, let us know what you guys area. think looks better, overlay or soft light well, on this photo. An overlay looks bad right now, but we can make it look good. Right. <laughs> so, um, so, so there's a okay. There's one question. What if we don't know the camera megapixels? What do we? What do they do with the blur? Um, what I would say is, if you don't know the camera megapixels, you want your blur to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want your blur to look like it's just one color in the photo. And you don't want to still be able to see and tell what every single thing in the photo was. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting, you know, you're getting to that point of the photo is blurry, but I can still make out some small minor details. Okay. That's kind cool. of a rule of thumb. It shouldn't be right. one color, but it shouldn't be so detailed either. Yeah. And the follow-up question, what if we use a JPEG image? Well, same thing, as long as same it looks, thing. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a JPEG. The only problems you have with a JPEG is your exposure. Mm -hmm. Like if I had something that was really dark and I tried to pull the shadows out of it, it starts to get yeah. noisy and degrades part of the photo. And it might not, but it's just you risk it a little bit more. Right. Um, so there's another place where we can use presets, and that is we can go to Select Color Range. And then what I do is go over here to Highlights, and you see how it selects the highlighted area mm -hmm. in the middle there. Yep. All right. So I can go to select color range highlights, and then I can even save presets inside of here. So if I hit save, a lot of times I'll do like highlights light, highlights middle, mm -hmm. highlights mm -hmm. you know, strong, whatever. Right. I'll save a couple of different presets, and then you can just go in there and you click on your preset, and it'll remember the settings right. that you saved in there. So again, there's presets all over the place. Yeah. But I'm just going to go over here to select highlights. And what it's going to do is going to put a selection around that bright part mm -hmm. of the photo. And then, so what happens if I add a layer mask to it? The selected area stayed, mm -hmm. the rest of it went away and shows us the layer below. But if you go to select inverse and you add a layer mask, now the selected area mm -hmm. stays, which is the background. Yeah. And before you add that, or if you don't mind undoing that for just a second, yeah. like the way, because sometimes like if you're mm -hmm. zoomed in, you really don't, because I usually use the keyboard shortcut, right? Yeah. Um, but sometimes you don't know if you actually <laughs> made the invert. So what I like to do is zoom out and see the marching ants around, around the canvas. This, yeah, around the yeah, size. So of that's it. how you know that you yeah. inverted the selection. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to. Oh, no, no problem. Yeah. So now I've got everything else selected, and then I can go and add that layer mask. Can yeah. you see what it did? So oh, wow. if I hit the shift key, mm -hmm. that turns it off. That turns it back on. So you can see without the layer mask right. and then with. So I very, very, in a very feathered way, selected that highlight mm -hmm. of the sky. So it nice. doesn't look, I, I would like, if I were to have brushed that away, like how, you know, it's going to look like crap, right? If I just brush <laughs> it away, if I just add a layer mask and I take B for yeah. brush. And then you start. <laughs> and I just start going like this, like. like all know, right, here we are. Like, yeah. that's what I get. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no transition. That's mm -hmm. why that select color range is such a good, uh, such a good thing there. And so. actually, that's the, the real power of for Photoshop, that you can exactly. be very, very specific on what you want to select. You decided to select the highlights, to use the range slider to increase or decrease that selection, and you got close to perfect selection. Exactly. So, so that's, uh, so that's 
a, a thing that we would do. So let's turn this into an action. You were going to say something? Me? Uh, no. Uh, okay. Oh, no. So yeah, how do we you, turn this? This is all you. All right. So, <laughs> so where do presets come into this? Well, Photoshop has something called actions. If you go to the mm -hmm. window menu, actions, you'll always, if you ever see a little play mm -hmm. icon in your interface there, that's the actions panel. So an action is basically you're going to turn on a tape recorder mm -hmm. and Photoshop's going to record you doing something. Mm -hmm. And then you stop it. Yeah. And then and make you sure can you're wearing play pants because Photoshop is recording <laughs> as you're doing it. Exactly. This. Like it knows yeah. everything. Yeah. But you stop it and then you can play that back. So let's yeah. go do this. We're going to go do an action. Keep in mind, every action first needs a folder. Okay. Right? So Photoshop comes with default actions like vignette, uh, frame channel, wood frame. There's a, is the, the molten lead is still here. You got to yeah. love molten lead. Like molten lead has stood the test of time. <laughs> In Photoshop. Yeah? Look at that. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, wood frame. Let's see what wood frame does. It's Am funny because I, I look at all these old effects from like the, you know, late 80s, early 90s, and they all use the clouds filter for something. You yes. Know what I mean, <laughs> that was like the go to filter. Did you say late 80s? There well, I guess Photoshop, Photoshop one. one. Oh, but there was no layers. So then I, wait, was there actions in Photoshop I one? I don't know. We don't, yeah, let us know. I don't right. know when actions came about, but Photoshop one came out in eighty nine. So yeah, that's, that, right. that's where yeah. my head was, yeah, no. was when I said late eighties. But all right, come back to uh, I gotta get this back to yeah. the start. That wood frame thing <laughs> that just killed frame. us. Like it added so many history <laughs> states, I couldn't undo it anymore. Yeah. So we'll just sit there and watch. This is going back to the big <laughs> file. Come on, there we go. Crop now it. Now I've gotta go or back. Resize it. Resize it. There we there go. We okay. Go. All right, we're back. So we are back. We're in the actions panel. So remember, every action needs a folder. So let's go down here and add a new folder, and we'll just call this Adobe Live. Cool. Hit OK. And then we're going to hit the plus icon to create a soft glow. I hit record. So right now, it's the stressful part because Photoshop is recording everything you do. <laughs> All right. So you should have your workflow pretty well fine-tuned. So let's go. We're going to press Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. All right. We're going to go up here to the filter menu. Now, we're going to do something even better to make this to make this work because you're thinking, "All right, if I hard code that 40 megapixels mm -hmm. into the Gaussian blur filter, it's going to assume every photo is mm -hmm. that same size and they may not be." Right. So what I do is I convert that layer to smart filter, mm. which means it's going to get that little icon mm -hmm. down here, which means it's a smart filter layer or smart object layer, Yep. which means when I add a filter to it, I'll always be able to go back and change it. So I'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'll put in 40, click OK. And then I'm going to go filter camera raw filter and add plus one to it. Click OK. And you can see these get stacked mm -hmm. over here. So I'll always be able, after this is done, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work for the next photo, I'll be able to go in there and tweak it. Um, and then I'll go over here and I will change my blend mode here. Again, we'll go we'll go with overlay for this one. So I'll change my blend mode there to overlay. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, depending, the, the thing I did with the select color range was very, very specific to this photo. It's not something that every photo is going to need. So I don't know that I'd put it into the glow action. Like mm -hmm. let, let an action do what it's supposed to. If you find you do that select color range thing again for the highlights, mm -hmm. make that an action. Right. Like keep it, keep each action to its own its own purpose. Uh, but I might want to add a uh, add a layer mask to that layer um, to you know just allow me to do something to. It. I won't do anything now on it. But if I did, if I did brush and everything, all that stuff gets recorded. Mm -hmm. So and you can actually see the recording on right there. Every exactly. Time you, every time you do something, it adds one of those little little. It little adds a step. Here. Yeah, step. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we can even go and we can go to the Actions Palette menu mm -hmm. or Panel menu. We go to Actions Panel menu, and then you can say Insert Stop. Mm. And I'll insert a stop, and I can put a message. So <laughs> I can say, you know, uh, Action is done. Uh, adjust Camera Raw Raw Filter and 
blur to adjust the effect. And this is what we were talking about yesterday when, when creating an action and adding a comment. And so, then setting it up in the script event yeah, manager to so it appear just pops over up everything. Whenever which, you do, yep. You know, you Go left back your, and watch you let, you left your computer that. alone yesterday. <laughs> I, I might or might not have done yeah, something yeah. to it. Just really quick, we have the uh, design feedback in about 23 <clears> minutes. <throat> so make sure that you log into Discord so you can submit the work that you did with Kathleen this morning. I'm already looking at the um, <clears throat> Uh, Discord page and there's a lot of work being submitted. So make sure that you go in there now and submit your work so that Matt and I can give you our thoughts. Cool. So, so you can do that now. Awesome. Um, all right. So I adjusted that. I said that little message, click OK. So you can see it's going to insert a stop there. And then I can just hit stop recording. Mm -hmm. So now let's go through here and let's delete that layer. So we're back at the original photo. And okay. now we can come over here to this action and mm -hmm. then just hit play and it'll go through and apply all the things we did. See the little box pops mm -hmm. up, action is done, adjust camera raw and blur to adjust the effect, mm -hmm. continue, and we're done. Awesome. Pretty cool. Now, again, let's say we apply this to a different photo. So let's go mm -hmm. over here and let's grab this photo. And Command or Control E is the shortcut to mm -hmm. jump that over into mm -hmm. Photoshop. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't show brushes in and people. All right. I'll have to go back let's and do go, that. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. So now I've got a different photo over here. Mm -hmm. And then I just hit the play button on it and it'll go through. And, and it does all, those, run steps all those steps. That, and this is a large file too. So this is a larger yeah. file, so it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit longer and it's gonna be a good one for me to go and adjust because the filters yeah. that it's gonna run probably weren't tuned for a larger file this size. Right. Yeah, so this is, what camera was this shot on? Uh, this was a, probably a Sony A7R III yeah. II. I'm still 40, 40, 40 plus megapixels. Yeah, so it's pretty, yeah. pretty large. So you can see here it's gone through and it's added everything. And now I could say, well, maybe, you know, maybe this is too bright and I don't really want to pull back. I don't really want to mask it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's too bright. So I can double click on the camera raw filter and then pull that back. Mm -hmm and we'll go through and adjust it. Right. I can adjust the opacity, and then I can go and double click on the Gaussian blur. And that was 40. Maybe I crank that up to 60 and click OK. And then again, I think it's overall too punchy, so I could always just switch it over mm -hmm. to soft light, which I think would be a little bit better. Right. Um, I won't go over the technique, but we did the highlights thing over here, or you know, maybe you just take your brush. You know what? I, I really do like the. We're gonna do it. Select. <laughs> Cut. I can't show this one enough because I think it's so good. You go over here, you click on highlights. Mm -hmm. You have to eyeball this part. You know, what are yeah. the highlights? Like, what do you want to fix? Like, this, this is gonna be different for every photo. Like, I, w I don't yeah. want it to do that. I just want it to be over there. Feature request. It'd be cool if it updated on the actual canvas. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it puts that selection around there. Mm -hmm. And then another alternative too, I, I wish I could tell you like, sometimes it's just what mood strikes me. Right. I might do the whole invert thing and just add the layer mask, but sometimes I just take my brush, set the foreground color to black, mm -hmm. and I'll usually bring the opacity down. And then I've already, I'm already on a layer mask, so mm -hmm. if I brush with black, you can see. Yeah. Let's crank that up a little bit. It's coming up. So I'm starting to just brush in there. Yep. And because the selection is actually protecting the rest of the photo. So mm -hmm. it's just a different way to do the same thing. Again, there's, you know, sometimes it's just whatever mood strikes me as far as doing it that way. Right. So you could see the layer mask again. If I hold down the shift key, that was before. That yeah. was after. So when you hold down shift and you click, you see that little red X. Yep. And that means that it's the disabled. layer mask is off. Yeah. And then the layer mask is back, back on. on. Awesome. Okay. So that's a quick introduction to you know Photoshop pre, probably mm -hmm. the most popular Photoshop mm -hmm. preset, which is actions. Um, some of the things that you can do with that. Cool. Let's uh let's take a quick jump back because I, I, I wanted to show that on port. I wanted to show some of those portraits. brushes. All right. On let's portraits. check it out. There. So let's take a look at. That's about this one here. So 
when we go over here, number one, expand that open. Mm -hmm. So portraits is a, another great place where you can start to use these things. Let's go in and uh, zoom in on her. So we can go in here and we can increase the exposure and brighten the eyes. Uh, sometimes I'll just brighten the white parts, mm -hmm. like so. Uh, if you look inside, one of the presets that came with Adobe is, let's click on new, make a new brush. One of the presets that comes with Lightroom is Iris Enhance. Mm. So you click on Iris Enhance and you can see it moves a couple sliders for you. Yep. So you just paint over the iris. Now I've added texture to it too, mm -hmm. which looks really good. Same thing over here. Again, I can click on new and maybe just add a little bit of whitening. Nice. To the eyes there. All right. I always tell people, <laughs> oh, you see the little dots? Yeah. So you can tell them to go away when you move your cursor. See down here where it says show edit pins? Always. Oh. If I change this to odd, oh, or is it behind us? Yeah, now, <laughs> now, now it's there, yeah. So show edit pins, it said always. Yeah. But if I change it to auto, mm -hmm. what'll happen is, is as I move my cursor in, they right. show up, as I move my cursor out, they, they go away. Nice. So now I can go down and I can turn on my little toggle. Mm -hmm. And see the before and after. Hi, hey, Zeus, how yeah. you doing? <laughs> Imagine if that's how people blinked. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so that's one thing for the eyes where it comes in handy. Um, another one would be for, you can make some brushes for lips. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. So, I know, I'm pretty sure I did one. So the eye sharpening one, that one comes with Lightroom, but the one you're gonna show now does not. Correct? Yeah, this one does not. Okay, so cool. lips, lips brighter. So what did I do? I added some exposure, I added some contrast, some highlights, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of negative texture, which will blur. Texture one way makes it textury, the other way blurs. A little bit of clarity, a little bit of saturation, take the sharpness down. Mm -hmm. So, something like that. And then if it's too bright, you just bring down, mm -hmm. bring down your exposure a little bit. Awesome. So somebody had asked, and that's what brought us into the portrait part right. of this. Somebody had asked, what, uh, do you use a soft or mm -hmm. a hard edge brush? So what I would say here, you would always want a soft brush. You'd always want a feathered edge yeah. of a brush. But I would say if you're working on the eyes, which we were doing before, and let's just reset this to get all those changes gone. If you're working on the eyes, um, let's see, eyes bright. So a little bit of exposure, a little bit of highlights. If I'm working on the eyes, I probably will hit the left bracket key, mm -hmm. make my brush smaller, and then go over here and bring that feather down. Right. And that's a place where I would probably, ooh, that looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks really bad. Bad. <laughs> All right, so that's obviously way too bright, but we can pull it back. There you go. No, but see, sometimes I actually like to um, paint with the extreme so that I can really see what I'm targeting. And then when I'm done painting, that's when I bring it back. You know what I mean? That, and that's a great, for everybody out there, that's actually a really good editing. I, I do the same thing where I'll push something to the extremes mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll, I'll dial it back. Like mm -hmm. I wanna see where it can go. Yeah. I wanna see how far, yeah. like yeah. what kind of leeway that I have. And then it's always then dial back from mm -hmm. there because to me it, it ha also helps make it more natural. Yeah. And a lot of times, a lot of times what I'll do is, you know, I'll make something brighter mm -hmm. and then I'll start pulling it all the way back to zero and then brighten <laughs> it. Like sometimes start from zero yeah. and gradually yeah. creep up too. But yeah, I ever, use the extremes thing. Have you ever all the done time. something like that where you're like, all, you know, you start with the extreme and you come back and you're like, that looks, so, oh, that's perfect. And then it's like, oh, that's how I started at zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there have been times. Yeah. And then there's there's the old, you know, a lot of things we tell people too is, um, especially for things like this, like eyes and retouching, walk away. Because when you sit back, like you get so in the zone. Do, do you remember like, this was probably 10 years ago, mid 2000s, mm -hmm. 
HDR was a was like the craze. Right. And then there's a program called Photomatics. And Photomatics would give you that HDR look. And people got desensitized to it. And what would happen is they would post this photo and say, oh, yeah, I didn't really do any HDR to it. And you're looking at it, you're like, dude, like you HDR the crap out of this. And you got so desensitized. So I'd always say, like, walk away from it. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in the when you're in the, the mix of it, it's hard to, to right, see. Right. But walk away and you'd be surprised at how you'll see it with fresh eyes. All right, let's see here. So another thing we can do when it comes to our brushes, and again, another good uh, preset idea would be uh, to go over here, add a new one, and then texture. So texture, we would never want to add more texture to somebody's skin, because mm -hmm. that's bad. But if we take texture the other way, which is actually why it was created, uh, story has it that Adobe was creating a mm. skin smoothing slider. They were creating a skin softening right. slider. And what they realized was that, you know, when you started softening with it, it worked great. But when you went the other way mm -hmm. with it, it actually added texture ah. instead of removing texture, hence the name texture nice. instead of just skin softening. Right, right. So, and it's turned out to become one of my favorite yeah. favorite adjustments. So, I've actually gone back to old photos and applied it to like, especially with yeah. like fur and stuff. Cats. Yep. Cats. <laughs> <laughs> works great on those. Yeah, it was great, works great on cats. All right, you want an, another cool idea for an action? Yeah. So I reserve this for, I reserve this thing for photo here. Let's bring down our opacity a little bit on this. So one of the things that we're gonna come across here in Photoshop is that sometimes it's hard to, like once we start getting layers, especially mm -hmm. smart object layers, sometimes we have to flatten the image yep. to continue on. So what I'll do is Command <clears throat> Option Shift E. Okay. And now I have a composite image on the top that I can start working on too. Um, so an important topic is not every photo is created equal, meaning every photo you take should not get all of the things we just talked about. Right, there are photos like, um, you know, my like when my wife and I were in Venice, and I walked by with my camera, even my camera, even my phone, or whatever. It's like click. It's a little bit of a snapshot, mm -hmm. but I want to post it. I want to share it on social, whatever. Like that doesn't go through my full photo workflow. It's just like it's a memory. It's a quick right. sharing moment. Mm -hmm. If it's my favorite photo, and I think, all right, this is going to go in my online portfolio. Mm -hmm. This is going to get printed big. Um, I'm going to use this to represent my photography. Right. Those are the ones where I start doing more and more things too. So not every photo gets all this stuff. So in Lightroom, we saw we could add a vignette. Mm -hmm. And I talked about that. But when it's a photo I really, really like, I'll a lot of times go in here to, to Photoshop and I'll add the vignette without or without doing it inside of Lightroom. Okay. So here's what I would do. I'd go and I would take my elliptical marquee mm -hmm. tool and I would just draw a big circle onto the screen here, okay? What's nice about it too is you can position it where you want it. And then I go up here to select, modify, feather, and I would feather this probably at least 50, if not, you know, 100 pixels or so. Mm -hmm. Really, really soft feather. In fact, we're gonna undo that. We're gonna go higher. Select, modify, feather. Yeah, let's do 200. Nice. All right. So we have feather. You don't see it. You don't see anything you can press Q if you want to see it. Oh, yeah. There, there, there we you go. go. So now we can actually visually see it. Right. So now we have a feather. And that feather, if you look, we have the inside of the photo selected. Okay. Well, what I can do is remember, when I add a layer mask, what's selected stays. Mm -hmm. So if I add a layer mask right now, only the inside of the photo, if I were to hide everything else, only the inside of the photo stays, which is the opposite of what I want. Mm -hmm. What I want is the outside to be there. So what I can do is just go to that layer mask and press Command or Control I mm -hmm. for invert. Nice. And that inverts the mask, so it makes black, white, white, black. So now what we do is we just change the blend mode to multiply, and then we reduce the opacity. So this, when I've got a photo I really, really like, this is how I do 
a vignette on it. Because mm -hmm. it uses, it actually burns in the edges of the photo and uses the photo itself to, to, to burn those edges in where Lightroom, it's not black, but it's kind of just painting black on the sides. It, it's got more to it, but this to me still looks right. better for a lot mm -hmm. of photos, especially if there's sky, there's blue sky in the photos. Here, you could get away with a regular one, but there's a lot of blue sky. You don't want that blue to turn black. You want that blue to turn to deeper blue to vignette the photo. So that's another great candidate to make an action. Right. Because why do I want to do this over and over again? Just click and just let it run the action. Alberto, mind blown. <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> And then what's really cool is I can go click on that uh, on that layer mask over here. Yep. And there's a little link uh. in between. If I turn that off, I can now move the layer mask independent of the photo. So when you create an action, you are going to hard code a circle vignette in the mm -hmm. middle and maybe your photo doesn't, you know, maybe your photo is a little more like this right. where I want to put, I want to put the focus over here, which is not right in the mm -hmm. middle of the photo. You so, can drag that over. Exactly. So you were just un, just unlink that, that link between the two. Mm -hmm. And now this becomes a little spotlight nice. that you can then. So we have the design feedback in about seven minutes. So once again, make sure that you log into uh, log in into Discord and submit your work um, that you did with Kathleen this morning. We'll, we'll be checking those out in about seven minutes. Cool. So excited to do that. All righty. Um, so let's what do, do. What do you have for us in the next seven minutes? What are we What are we learning now? Let's do. Let's Let's introduce luminosity masking. Ooh. Will, will we have time after the design thing? Maybe not too much. <laughs> Maybe not too much. Maybe not Maybe too. Maybe not too. I, I don't want to commit okay, myself. You know, I don't want right. to commit myself. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. Let's uh, here. Let's talk about a couple other presetty type things. Here, okay. So. Um, some ways that I would finish finish this or, or, or things that I would do. So you ever use libraries? Yeah. That's like, to me, that's like the ultimate preset mm -hmm. sex. Like, yep. so if you guys haven't seen libraries, you go to the window menu, come over here to libraries mm -hmm. and it's this little icon over here. Yep. Guys, I, I love, this is like one of my favorite features that nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. um, so you could go in here, you can group, I, I've got different groups yeah. of things. So. I've got brushes, I've got textures, mm -hmm. um, I've got calendar presets, yep. I've got graphics. All kinds of stuff. So think of things that you might save, like different graphics. Again, think of a graphic as a preset. So your logo or your mm -hmm. signature or whatever it happens to be. So I've got my logo in here. I can just drag that out onto the photo, resize it, drop it off in the corner there, and then again, What's the keyboard shortcut? Command I mm -hmm. will turn black into white or white into black. So Command I switches that over into black and then I can just mm -hmm. reduce. Yeah, Control I if you're on Windows, by the way. Command or Control I, yeah. I can just reduce the opacity, make it a little bit smaller. Nice, yep. And you can drag, drop a little watermark. Nice logo, by the way, you designed it? Uh, no, I had somebody oh. design it for me, although. I was gonna so, say, man, you're a good designer. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't. I. It's funny. Somebody. Some. I'm not even gonna say it on here because I don't want to get myself in trouble. But like, somebody's like, yeah, your logo looks like a, it looks like another famous. Uh, there, there's a brand out oh, there. Oh really? That it looks like. Uh -oh. Thank God, it's got some features in it that are not. But okay. It does have some resemblance to it that I didn't see at first. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, that's a. Uh, so we go in here and you can just drag that. But if you want to make this more presetable, mm -hmm. then start thinking about different things that you might put on your photo. So here's a really cool little tutorial. All right, we're gonna create a blank document. Okay. D for my foreground color. I'm gonna add some text here. So as an Adobe subscriber, you get access to so many cool fonts. There's so many good fonts in here. But what's neat is when you do a search for script, all right, and you can go up here to the type menu and, uh, and you can go to more from Adobe fonts mm -hmm. and that's going to take you to a screen where you can search. And so I searched for script. And so let's go with, they've got some funny names. Let's go with doctor. There's a doctor one. I don't think I've seen that one, doctor. Yeah, doctor Carb Fred Pro. Oh, nice. Is it like a, a doctor handwriting script kind of thing? So look. Oh, nice. Look at that. 
I can come in here and make that a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, it's not supposed to take place of your name. Like it's just, it's just cool. Like, right. So here, and here's actually a really good story because somebody's like, yeah, but that's not your, that's not really your signature. It's kind of fake. Right, right. Well, you know what the problem is, is I made a print for my brother and I did this. That looks pretty cool. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> I went away. I know. I can't figure out how to, which one was, all right. I made a print for my brother and if I signed my name to it, mm -hmm. nobody would be able to read it because my signature is literally <laughs> just scribble. Yep. So if I sign my name to it, it does nothing. But I did something like this, and I put it just off in the bottom corner, mm -hmm. and it, it's a conversational piece. Now people, like I've made, framed it and everything, people walk into his place, like, oh, your brother's a photographer, because uh, they can see the name. Yeah, right. You'd never be able to see the name otherwise. Right. So I think that's a pretty cool little thing. And then if you really want to take this to like the next level, right click and go to convert to shape. And now I can go in here and I can take my direct selection tool for all of you illustrators out there. And I can select parts of the type mm -hmm. and check that out. Nice. Now I can stretch it and I can start extending some of these lines. So what you're doing is, is you're making it your own. Mm -hmm. You're taking a font that existed out there mm -hmm. that, you know, anybody can go do what we just did and somebody could have a similar signature. But now you go in there and you're making this your own. You're, mm -hmm. you're adding flair to it. You're doing things that not everybody else would have on their, their thing. And if you really want to be cool with it, is add yourself another layer, go to your brush tool. And I'm just going to use a hard edge brush. I'm going to rotate it, squish it together like so. And then I'm gonna crank my smoothing up to 100%. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll erase mm -hmm. certain parts of the signature. So let's say the K here, I won't go through the whole process, but then you go over here and now you just draw your own. Mm -hmm. Right. You see like, and because that smoothing's up at 100%, it actually looks. And so, you're pretty good with that trackpad, by the way. I know. <laughs> so you do something like, yeah. oh, that's actually a good one. I like that one. There we go. Right. So little fun things like that. But now you've got a couple of things. You can go to your type tool and you can turn that into a preset. Mm -hmm. So anytime you want to use that font and that combination, you come up here and you make it a type preset. It's in the top left-hand corner. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is you can take your type layer and you can go and drag it over into your libraries and now it shows up as a little and preset there inside and you can of there. Use it. Yeah. So let's delete all that. And now I can be working on this photo and then just drag it in, put it down in the corner, Commander Control I. Oh, sorry, here, let's put it. <laughs> there you go. Let's put it up there. Commander Control I. And it there it is. And then play with the opacity or take it down to zero <laughs> and just drag it nice. around. That looks really nice, actually. Like right it's a bottom. really yeah. fun way to, to make a signature. Again, yeah. especially if your signature sucks, <laughs> I find it works pretty good. So. Mine is terrible, by the way. All right, you gotta leave me five minutes, or at least like three uh, or four minutes. Three or four. After. All right, all right. I'll, I'll try to keep an eye on. on Cause I got time. one more thing I want to yeah, do. And, so. But we got twenty seconds for the sign feedback. Once again, that's on Discord. Um, it, you still got 20 seconds to get in there now and submit your work so that we can check it out. Kathleen was working on some masking, creating um, ambience and like uh, fog and clouds like and things like that with masking in Photoshop. So that's what we're gonna look at now in like the next five seconds. I think we're just gonna get right into it. Let's just get right into it. <laughs> so we're on time for we're once. On time. We're on time Yay. for something. <laughs> so um, I actually, I'm actually refreshing the page to make sure that we have the actual um, work here. So some of these may be out of, oh, see, we just got a submission. It looks like uh, this is for day eight, which is today. And oh, he uh, likes, Santaji yeah. likes that purple color. Yeah, that's his style. He likes that combination. Cool. I remember him from yesterday. Yeah, well, click on that. And so it looks like they, um, he used the clouds filter to generate the um, clouds that go into the image to create that ambience. So any, any thoughts, suggestions? Uh, I, I, I dig it. It's a uh, yeah. cool mood. I like the, I like the clouds. I like the background, mm -hmm. I like everything. You know what I would do is, um, when you, I don't know if you place that car there, I don't know, whatever, but 
somehow, some way, whether it's Photoshop Lightroom, take a brush and brush in that parking lot mm -hmm. to match the shadow a little bit darker. Yeah. And and then that way your car will like really pop out of the yeah pop out of the image because that that parking lot's so bright like yeah that's what I'm drawn to. It's almost the same tone as the car itself. So totally agree. And also like the I, the lights are on, but it. it I would make, I, I would, adding to your suggestion, if you make the image darker, I think those the lights, lights would, look, it would, cool. Yeah, would yeah. look cool. Yeah, the lights would look a lot better. It's just so bright down there. so bright. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good work overall. I'm guessing what they did there was probably just the, um, the what do you call it, the um, clouds filter, and then just maybe mask a couple of things. So I'm, I'm guessing this is how that was created, but yeah. it looks, looks cool. All right, uh, next. Um, not, I think this might have been for a different challenge, but we'll look at it since it's a, a landscape and we have somebody who's an expert <laughs> in las landscape photos. Yeah, um, so uh, photography-wise, uh, I, I love the, the, so triangles are good. Mm -hmm. So anytime we see triangles in a photo, you can see the, the way that they've angled the foreground um, in there. And I love, I love triangles that sweep through and meet a horizon and mm -hmm. then sweep back across. So if you if you were to try to draw triangles on there, you'd be able to draw so many different ones. And okay. triangles are just a good thing um, in photography. It keeps our eye moving where straight lines tend to stop us. Awesome. Um, so I love that. If if this were me, I, I want to be down near those pilings or whatever that is, that old dock or like something right here? in there. Yeah. yeah. I want to be down there and I want to be like doing like a five or ten second exposure. And, and having that be the foreground. Mm -hmm. Right now your foreground is, is it trampled sand? Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's a smaller photo, so yeah, that's what it looks like. But. Yeah, so right now, I mean, your foreground's okay. It's just, I wanna be down near that mm -hmm. water and I wanna do some long exposure near those those pilings. And I think that would be a, a pretty strong shot too. So post-processing wise, I think you did great. I don't know what the color was. I'd never turn it black and white if that was a great sunrise or sunset. Right. Um, because you have beautiful color, why ruin it? Right. I don't know what your color was. It could have been a flat, a flat sunrise or sunset. And there's a little bit of a glow around the mountains there. Yeah. So whatever your post processing was, um, you gotta you gotta fix that up. That little glow. Cool. Awesome. And that was uh, Christy Fantastic. Um, the next one is this one here again. I'm not sure what challenge this was from. Doesn't look like it was today's challenge, but it's. Uh, Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Like, is this, it looks like it's a, somebody's head, hand, flowers, compositing, With maybe water mirrors. ripples. Yeah. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, I, I really don't have any comments because I think it's a great, yeah, you know, it looks composite. Neat, yeah. It looks awesome, yeah. Like, it's water, it's water, it's like somebody's, it's the back of somebody, somebody's back and neck, but then they've, imposed water ripples yeah. and a hand on it, which is yeah. pretty cool. And the water ripples with the hand look great. Like really good, yeah. So awesome job. And this was uh, Miss Limano. Great work. This one looks like today's challenge. Oh, it, it got, might have been the same the person from, from yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, Gerard, yeah. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the same eagle, but it's It looks similar. <laughs> he added some mood to it today. Yeah, he added some mood to it. So um, my comment on this would be that the fog, most uh, smoke, mist, whatever, whatever it is, is just too white. I would probably add maybe just like an overall co color overlay, just to kind of make it feel more cohesive. It yeah. feels too digital. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it doesn't behave like. Look at the road. Like fog doesn't behave like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'd probably maybe scooch the fog up a little bit so right. it settle like it settles on the ground. Like it's too uniform. Right. That fog right. would never show up like that. If you, even if you crop the road out of yeah. it, I think you'd you'd have a stronger. Yeah. And I know that Kathleen only had 30 minutes uh, to explain how to do something like this, but if you have a little more time, the technique that I like to use is actually, st why don't we just show them really quick <laughs> <laughs> from uh, like we did yesterday. Let me see if I, well, you, oh look, I, I think I still have that same photo <laughs> open from yesterday. Um, but basically, and just to make things go faster, I'm gonna make this smaller, but um, the technique that I like using, and I'm gonna go way too fast here just because I wanna, I wanna show it to you guys, but usually what I like doing is, um, you know, the same filter that he used, render, clouds, make sure that black and white is my foreground color, and it looks terrible because I have the color dodge blending mode that we were using <laughs> yesterday, and actually just to not confuse people, let me, let me use a brand new layer, filter, clouds. The first filter on top of the list is the last one that you use, so, so I'll apply that. 
So the way that, that I would do something like that just to create more depth will be to create a layer mask on that actual layer and then do a filter clouds on that and then create a group, put it in there. And in this group, I would hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, click on it to make it um, black. And then I would just paint in, and again, I'm going super fast here, but um, bring- Rewatch watch the video. <laughs> bring, yeah, I know, watch it in slow and like change the speed in the, <laughs> in the playback. But just paint with white and just subtly bring it in. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's black now, but you know, we can always, Change, um, change the color. You see how that layer is there. I can attach, you know, like a um, hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to the layer below, colorize it, and then, you know, see how I can now change the color and then try to make it moodier or, you know, or, or whatever it is. But the point is, is that by adding that second um, uh, layer mask, now I'm not, it's not, as you said, not so uniform. So yeah. you break it apart, apart more. Yeah. And when I'm painting, I'm just kind of like, you know, just, just painting with like a dot basically like a giant dot yeah. and just revealing that part. So just a, a quick tip just to break it up a little more. And then using that hue and saturation adjustment layer with the colorized checkbox to change the color and, and match it more to, to the particular image. Or if you wanted to, if you don't wanna do this step with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, just use like a, either like a gradient map or maybe a color lookup look up adjustment layer and just select something that'll like affect the the entire image so that it, it, it matches. And actually I'm inside that um, that group, which is why it's not affecting the entire image, but I think that you get the idea. Yeah. Anyway, so I try to do like a whole, uh, like 45 minute presentation <laughs> in like two minutes, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, they, so. They can go back and rewatch it. Yeah, they can go Good back. stuff in there though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. I think he said that was the same equal from yesterday. Okay, so. cool, cool. But yeah, um, that, that's my only comment yeah. that I would just try to color match it a little bit better. And as you said, Matt, break up the- Yeah, randomize the, it. Yeah, more. randomize it a little more. And actually, I don't wanna get too geeky on that, but it's actually <laughs> like, it, like it, with certain um, canvas sizes, the render is um, seamless because it, it it's not really a random pattern. It's yeah. actually like, a, like uh, I think if you do like 1080 by 1080 or something like that, it's like, um, it'll be a seamless pattern no matter how you duplicate it because it, it, the algorithm just basically replicates that cloud. So it's not really, really random. Anyway, so this one is from challenge number eight. Oh, so th this is actually good that we get to see the before and the after. So I'll look at the before first. It's a, a nice little butterfly on some flowers. And then we have the after. Let's see the, can I see the before mm -hmm. real quick? Yeah. Okay. It's cool. Go back to the after. Neat. I love the blue. Yeah. I love the blue and the, the blue kind of cloudy type. It's almost like a mm -hmm. texture. You know, it's almost, it's not just clouds, but it's like, it's added a, almost a little bit of a texture to it. So I like it. I like the color combination. I like the blue mixed with the warmth of some of the, what's going on in the middle and the mm -hmm. glow of you know, how it interacts with the uh, the flowers on it too. Yeah, and uh, this was by, who's the person, Sean. Nice job, so, Sean. Yeah, so Sean, I actually um, kind of, he did what the previous person didn't really do. They took the, the color or the scene and added it to, to yeah. the cloud so it matches. My only thing is maybe I would I would make the butterfly stand out a little more. And you know, the butterfly's got some orange in there so it really would pop with that blue behind it. So yeah. maybe, Maybe just just reveal a little more of that butterfly and, and add, add a little more saturation. And if can, can we be what another thing to, to kind of take it up a notch? Yeah. So you don't have to do it, but if you were to grab the top right corner and crop it in, you know, if you grab that top right corner and pull it down and get that butterfly out of the middle, move it up toward more of that third quadrant up mm -hmm. there, I think it becomes a stronger composition mm. and maybe even clone a couple of those little things in the These, background out there. Okay, cool. So. Awesome. Just a little bit, just to crop it. I'm a, I'm, I'm a cropper. <laughs> You're a cropper. I'm a cropper. Well, I'm when a... you have that camera you have, you can, you can yeah. <laughs> crop it. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always cropping everything, uh, so. Yep, yep. Okay, here we go. And this is, uh, oh, actually this is Kathleen. So this is what Kathleen did and she added um, mist to the to the photo. So I'm beginning to think now that since Kathleen's example was in black and white, maybe the one that we yeah, saw earlier. Yeah, it's possible. 
Yeah. I like cool. it. Great, great candidate for that image. Or that was Kath. That, that was, was Kath. Oh, so we didn't even have to. I was going to say, yeah. what, I, what I really like about it is, I, so one of the things, my favorite things about fog, foggy uh -huh. days, yeah. is I love when things recede into nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as a photographer, if you're ever out there, if you want a formula and, you know, the sun's not doing what you want, if things recede into nothing, if you see an object and it, the atmosphere becomes mm -hmm. stronger and stronger in the distance yeah. and then it goes to blank, like that's a recipe for a good photo. Take that shot. Right, right. It's a recipe, so. Yep. Awesome. Uh, it was, yeah, Kathleen's a pro, so. Yeah, 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 she's, yeah. <laughs> I guess we can look at a few from uh, yesterday that we might have missed. Um, this is from day six, um, which was the day before yesterday that we didn't get to see, so I'm not really sure what the challenge was, um, but we'll still Hello? check it out. Um, the original image is this one. All right, and this is the after. So it looks like they composited in these pillars here, which oh. looks super cool. Yeah, very I, cool. I think, you know what? If you would have shown me this, I wouldn't. I would have never yeah, known. So, yeah. And I think one of the key things that this person did, I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, was but the perspective on, on that base yeah. is, it, it makes it seem so real. And then it's, you know, the image is backlit. So these things are so. I love dark. silhouettes. Yeah. Anything, when, when silhouette and form take, I think yeah. you've got a strong. A strong, a strong composition. Whenever that silhouette is is impactful enough, so yeah. yeah. And, and the, the the golden color with the dark, beautiful. Yep. Good job, spinning. Uh, okay, so we're looking at some of the light um, the neon glow, things yeah, that the we neon. didn't we didn't get to yesterday. They probably submitted it after we were finished with with our uh, review, but we'll check some of these out. All right. So I think yesterday we said some people might have gone a little bit too strong mm -hmm. on the light, yeah. on the the neon glowing things. Mm -hmm. I think I think the opposite of this one is you probably could have gone stronger. Yeah, I agree. I I think it would have been kind of cool to. We talked about blend diff yesterday, so maybe add a little bit of that blend diff on the yeah. on the uh, on the trees there to just kind of kind of make it seem like light was hitting it. But yeah, yeah, I like I I like the font that they chose. I, I mean. This could actually almost seems like a movie poster in a way. I would yeah. I would have just worked a little bit more on the light hitting the objects in the yeah. scene, and maybe doing that uh, that uh, vignetting technique that you used today, that really could help it. Yeah, awesome. And that was uh, Kiefer Creative. And does this look better now? Only seem to struggle with glowing text. All right, so let's see. I don't know if this is the. Oh, this is a tiny little picture. We can't really <laughs> really see it. Um, so. I mean, just judging from these, this tiny little thumbnail, it looks like the text is more legible, but it, um, they submitted a really tiny photo, so it's hard to, hard to read. Okay, here we go. This is from Susan, and yeah, it looks pretty good. I actually have the same comment I have, um, I had yesterday for somebody else that the glow was just a little too strong. I would just dial that back just a tiny it's, little bit. It's, it's got to emanate, yeah. not like there and stop. Yeah, yeah. So pretty good. And maybe even try to recreate, like, like I would probably just merge or duplicate, then merge the text and the glow, and then try to make it reflect on the water below. I think it would be really cool if you had something. Oh, that would something be Something right here just reflecting it. And it might be as easy, I mean, without trying it, I don't know, but it might be as just uh, as easy as just inverting it and then changing the blend mode to like, you know, screen or, or soft light or overlay or something like that. Yeah. And then adjusting the opacity. In this case, to be frank with you, probably blend if will work better. But um, yeah, just try to get that 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 text reflecting on the water and I think that would look cool, but I don't know, maybe. Let's see, oh, this is another cool one. Um, here we go, what do you think of that one? Oh, yeah, look at the, like the, especially the top, it's got that like streaky space age look to it. Yeah. Um, I like, I, I like it all. I think that little technique that we used yesterday to maybe mm. darken the area behind yeah. the text will help the text stand out more. Yep. Um, and then that white part, it maybe reduce the opacity of whatever you did in that white part because right. it's actually where you don't want people looking. Yeah, yeah. But that's going to be the first place people look in the photo. And it's funny, as you were talking about that, that's exactly what I was looking at. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, 
Let's see. Let's look at a few more because I know you wanted to show us one more thing. One so more thing. One more thing. So, so give me. Let me just look at one more. Oh, this is actually a content aware fail. I'm not really sure what. Oh, I think they. Uh, content aware fail plus neon. I'm not sure where they, what they removed. I don't see any other. Not really sure, but anyway, it looks pretty cool. I like the. Uh, see that the. So this person has uh, um, has had a really good idea of making the skates like glow, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. But then the issue in compositing comes in when you're trying to high, uh, brighten up the areas that are so dark, like his pants. It just doesn't look yeah. as good. So I would just tone it down just a little bit on those on those areas. Yep. Any other thoughts? I would pull. I mean, he's got. I'm just trying to look a little. It's got the. It's got a little bit of the glow reflecting off of them, which mm -hmm. is good. But yeah, I think I'd go with your with your comment there. Just a Probably little even tone too it strong. down. Yeah, just yeah. tone it down a little bit. And again, because it, it's a really bright scene, so those lights wouldn't be as bright in the real world. So yeah. maybe dark and everything else. Maybe and then maybe yeah. that would be okay. But the way it is now, it isn't. Um, it doesn't look as good with such a strong highlight. Yeah. So I know we don't have a lot of time, but I do want to give you an opportunity to show us a couple more things. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I got so I, I want to yeah. get to everything. So. Okay, cool. We got, in fact, we got to most most things. Um, we didn't really talk like brush presets and things. Okay. Because I think, especially like so many people said Photoshop yeah. was 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 their favorite, and I think. One of the reasons we go into Photoshop is for for brushing. Okay. Like you know, whether it's masking, whether it's uh, replacing a sky, whatever. Like a brush is going to be part of what we do in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get away from. Um, so in the last year, like I've I've started to realize I, I've I got into wildlife photography probably four or five years ago, and I started to realize like it's impossible to to be. I can't be in Costa Rica all mm -hmm. the time. Right. So. I like wildlife photography, so to keep me shooting, sometimes I go in my backyard, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I go to a zoo, whatever. Nice. And you get these scenes that are not these perfect scenes. Like this is, you know, this is in Costa Rica, almost right out of the camera. Like, you know, the background looks good, but that's not always going to be the case. You could be in a zoo and you could have a fence in the background, you could have a garbage can, you could have, and you could have things that you just can't remove with mm -hmm. content aware fill. And that's that's the key to it, you know. If it like this branch, if I wanted to remove the branch, yeah, I could get rid of that in Content Aware Fill. But mm -hmm. you might have scenes that you can't remove. So, a couple of different I things that I use presets for all of the time mm -hmm. is going to be texturing, okay, texturing and brushes. I use presets all the time for that stuff. So, we talked about libraries. I make sure you know I create myself a texture library. I just mm -hmm. you know, literally went in here and. Uh, and you just you know click on you click that little plus sign, create yourself a new group. I called mine textures. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll just go in here and I'll try to you know eyeball a color I think looks good. Mm -hmm. So I think that one looks pretty good. Nice. And then I'll drag it over the image like so. So we talked brushes. Well, I have to add a layer mask to this, and I have to I have to start to get rid of the foreground there. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I do is I'll go to the layer and I'll just go and hit uh, select subject. Mm -hmm. Where'd it go? Select subject. There, there it go. is. I'll go and I'll hit select subject. That's going to put a selection around the subject. And then I'll go back to that texture and select inverse. Mm -hmm. And now what I can do is I can use my layer mask and we talked about brushing. I'm not going to use that little slanted brush that we used before. Yeah. But I can go over here and I can start to use my layer mask. And oh, actually, I, I wanted the exact opposite, invert. <laughs> and now I start to yeah. get rid of that. But the key, when you're going to do stuff like this, the key is it's got to be random. So you'll notice, like, I'll go down here and I'll start to reveal. Mm -hmm. You want to incorporate elements of the real scene mm -hmm. into the texturing. Because anybody can just throw a texture on and change the blend mode. Right. You know, that'll that'll texturize the photo. And that's not what we want. But I'll, I'll paint more and then I'll switch over to white and then I'll paint it back. But where the brushes really come in is I'll go up here and you can, there's so many brush tip shapes. There's so many shape dynamics between scattering and texturing and all these different things. 
and I'm not gonna pretend to teach you all them in this moment, but if I can leave you with, when you go through your brush panel and you look through all the different folders that you get, there's just so many different things in here. So we can mm -hmm. go to special effects brushes. So this, you'll find a lot of Kyle's concept yeah. brushes or whatever. Yeah. So if I go through here, you'll see I can paint on this mask with these brushes and now I can really start to blend mm -hmm. my foreground and my background because no texture is gonna look good if you just outline the subject. Right. But now that I'm like, when I start to let it blend in with itself, Nice. You can do some really cool things with it. Can you, you want to show them how you get those uh, brushes? I like, am, yeah. Awesome. So I paint around there. Um, if you don't have a texture, you can always go and again, special effects brushes, Kyle's concept, anything that's mm -hmm. got the little finger for the mm -hmm. smudge tool on it. Mm -hmm. And so look at what happens if I paint the background. Nice. So again, you just want to do what we did before select your subject and you can right. protect it. Right. But, so now you're making your own texture. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not even going and trying to find one or download one. You're using some of these brushes Super cool. to texturize the photo. All right, I gotta finish it. <laughs> I know how that I feels. Feel like, but again, the key to doing this, guys, is you have to incorporate some of the photo. Mm -hmm. You've got to incorporate Feathers, edges of feathers, different things, so that it's not a, a straight right, outline right. around the photo. Yeah. And then you incorporate again. I, I like it for wildlife because I can't shoot perfect wildlife shots every mm -hmm. time. When I go to the zoo, there could be a compelling subject, mm -hmm. but there's a zookeeper mm -hmm. or uh -huh. barn behind Something, them yeah, that you yeah. can't clone right. out. And so this is a really good way to do that. Nice. All right. So where did those brushes come from? Yeah. Number one. Remember, when it comes to presets, you can always go up here, mm -hmm. click on the tool icon, and you can make your own preset. Mm -hmm. So that way you don't have to go set those settings again. Um, number two, if you come up here to your brushes mm -hmm. picker and yep. you go to this pop-out menu, you'll see over here, get more brushes. That'll take you over to Adobe's website and you can download full brush sets, which I, yep. I think I did uh, this, like there's a new one out for spring. Wait, what's that Water behind color. me? What is that behind me? So people. Oh, happy <laughs> birthday, Matt. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Matt, happy thank you. birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I eat them now? <laughs> yeah, eat. <you>. Mine. <laughs> I got you Oh, you did, thank you. Awesome. We talked about, we talked we about, talked about chocolate, chocolate earlier. Yeah, thank you. Thanks guys. <laughs> thank you, Adobe Live team. <laughs> you guys yeah. want one? Yeah, <laughs> chat and win for the <laughs> cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so but yeah, just go go to your little uh, go to your little brush picker. Mm -hmm. Click on that little pop out menu yeah. there, and just click on Get More Brushes. Yeah, uh, that'll take you to Adobe's website. And yeah. again, as the Creative Cloud subscriber, you get the download. Yeah, you have free to be ones. subscribed to the Creative Cloud. We have two uh, minutes, so I want to give you an opportunity to show people where they can find you how they can get a hold how of you, about your this? presets and all that good stuff. How about this? So nah. mattk.com is probably the best place. Uh -huh. um, that's where I've got a little, um, I've got a little, if you scroll to the bottom, there's a little sign up mm -hmm. form, you'll get on my email list and right. I send out a free video every week of something. Right, and if, if you don't mind switching over to my screen, Paco, I just wanna let you guys know that for those of you who are in the Bay Area tonight in San Jose at Adobe headquarters in San Jose, Matt and I will be again together <laughs> live in person. So if you wanna come down to San Jose tonight, um, we'll be there. You'll be teaching more yeah. Photoshop stuff there. It's tonight at 6.30 p.m. So go to meetup.com, look for the San Jose Photoshop user group and we'll be there. It will not be streamed, you have to be there in person. So if you wanna meet us in person, that's where, where yeah, we'll be Yeah, come on by. Yep. We'll love to meet you guys in person. And thank you, uh, chat, everybody in the chat room. Thank you so much for all of the uh, all the happy birthdays. I appreciate it. <laughs> yep. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I don't know. If we have time for the graphic for who's up next, but if and thank yeah. you, dude. Oh, thank yeah. this guy. <laughs> awesome. So um, you got. We started the day with Kathleen doing the daily Photoshop Creative Challenge, and then it was us doing Photoshop presets. We have Andrea Hawk next teaching Adobe XD. It's going to be a daily Creative Challenge, so make sure that you stick around for that. And then after that, we have Shanti doing editorial design and Andrew doing il uh, the daily creative challenge for Adobe Illustrator. So make sure that you stick around. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Later. Bye.